Marcia Jess, family and consumer science educator with Ohio State University Extension. What's for dinner? Have you ever asked that question? I imagine most of us have at one time or another. Today I'd like to share with you a quick easy recipe called Healthier Swiss Steak. And it'll show you that you can make a quick easy meal for your family that's nutritious and ready to go. One of the things that we want to include in any dinner meal is that good source of protein. It's often featured in many of our dinner meals as that it tends to be that main meal of the day. We're starting today with um, a round steak, which is a healthier cut of, a leaner cut of meat, of beef, and uh, it works really well. One of the things we need to remember as we look at how to prepare our meals is how much is a good serving size? How much meat should I prepare for my family? We say that a three to four ounce serving of uncooked meat is where we need to start. And this is a boneless um, cut of meat, so we really aren't going to have much waste to it. It's pretty much all bread meat. We'll start with that um, round steak, which is also a less tender cut. We've prepared about three to four ounces per person, and our recipe that we're going to have today really calls for about one pound, and that is enough for about four people. If your family is larger, you can easily double this recipe as your needs may arise. So as we start here, we're um, going to remember anytime we are in the kitchen and preparing food that we'll want to wash our hands well with soap and water before we get started. And meat is no exception. This is one um, meal that we're going to actually plan ahead for and start the night before. So the next night when you come home to prepare that meal, it will be ready to go. Uh, it also is a great one for weekends when maybe you have a little bit more time around the house that you have for, pre for food preparation. So today we have our round steak that we're using. It's considered a less tender cut of meat and so we're going to select a, a preparation method that really will help tenderize that meat. We don't want it to be like shoe leather. We want a nice tender piece of meat when we're ready to eat. There's a couple of things we can do. We can marinate it. We can cook it long and slow um, with lots of moisture, or we can actually manually pulverize it and pound it to kind of break down that connective tissue that makes it a little, a little less um, uh, tender. What we're going to use today is a method with uh, as a marinade. Most marinades have an acid, which does help to break down that connective tissue and help to tenderize that meat. We have um, our round steak that again was, that came without any bone, it was already deboned, but it does have a little bit of fat and we're going to remove a little bit of that extra fat off the edge that we really don't need. So I'll remove that. I like to prepare this recipe in um, kind of uh, the type size pieces that you're going to actually uh, be serving. So I've already cut it into about three or four ounce um, slices and we'll finish this last one off as well. It'll be all ready to go when we have it. Once we put it in, and I prefer a glass dish for marinating, so that would be your preferred um, container. It could be a clear glass or a casserole dish, uh, whatever you might have available at your house. And what I'm adding is a, one can of tomato sauce and that's about one and three-fourths cups. And we're just gonna smother that whole amount of meat that we have in our bowl. I like to then also take it and make sure, flip it over and make sure that that sauce has gotten on both sides and we've got it coated well. We're not going to add any salt to our meat today or to our recipe. Uh, there is a lot of salt in most of the canned prepared foods. So there is salt in the tomato sauce. We'll also be adding, when we get ready to prepare this, some herbs and spices that will also help take the place of that sodium that we often add and sprinkle as salt. So let me add just a little bit of pepper as we prepare our marinade. Again, this can be done the night before or the morning before if you're going to be cooking it in the evening. And you'll want to cover it as you put it in the refrigerator and then it's going to just marinate overnight or throughout the day. Probably six or eight hours is, is plenty to have this um, really marinate and starting to tenderize before we prepare it and get it ready for the oven. 
Just cover it with a piece of saran and, and we'll add that right to the refrigerator. After our round steak has marinated six to eight hours or overnight, we're ready to prepare and cook it. We're going to take off the saran and add just a few more extra ingredients to our recipe. We've marinated the steak in the tomato sauce and to that we have about three-fourths of a cup of chopped celery that we'll sprinkle across, a four-ounce can of mushrooms. I like to drain mine. That does help reduce the sodium just a little bit. If we add the sodium uh, that's in the juice of the mushrooms can add again that additional sodium. We've got two tablespoons of dried onion. That makes it quick and easy and you don't have to cry over chopping your onion. And finish with about one tablespoon of dried parsley. If you have some fresh parsley in your garden or from the market, that also makes even a brighter colorful finish to our uh, round steak. Let me just kind of adjust this and spread everything out and we're ready to cook in a 350 degree oven. It'll take about an hour and a half. So this is a great time to finish and prepare the rest of your meal that you'll be having with your steak. We're gonna cover it tightly. You'll recall the round steak is a little bit less tender, so we're gonna make sure we keep all that moisture locked in and that helps to tenderize that uh, meat as it cooks. So with the tomato sauce that we marinated in with a nice tight cover, in a 350 degree oven about an hour and a half and we'll be ready for supper. We'll pop that in. And what we have is our finished steak ready for supper. The smell is wonderful and you probably smell it as you uh, prepare the rest of your meal. We've got the mushrooms and the, the celery all nice and uh, cooked and it imparts that wonderful flavor. This is a great meal to plan ahead for but makes that the actual um, preparation for your dinner very easy and quick. One of the last things we want to do is it looks good and it smells good. We really should just test the temperature with a probe thermometer. And for beef, about 160 degrees is where we need to be. So I'll give it just a quick test here. The thermometers take just about 15 seconds and we'll know that that meat is done. If you rushed yours just a little bit, you might want to give it just a little more time if it's not reaching that um, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. There we have it. A meal hot and ready to go with a potato that could be cooked in the oven at the same time with a quick vegetable or fruit salad and perhaps a whole grain dinner roll, we have a meal ready to go. And what a great meal it is with the protein that we have and the less tender cut of meat that really is an economical buy for our budget as well. We've got a great meal. So you don't have to be asking what's for dinner all the time. Keep this recipe in your back pocket ready to go and uh, pop it in for your family the next time you're looking for something extra special. I'm going to share a quick, easy recipe for you to try. It's a great accompaniment to a dinner meal at your house. It's super easy, economical, and delicious and nutritious that uh, anyone can make. We're starting with two small to medium sized apples and today I have two red apples. Um, you can choose green apples or a, a yellow apple would we work just as well. Your choice or whatever's in season. We're adding about a half to one cup of celery and that's variable depending on your likes and the likes of your family. We also today are going to use grapes. I like to cut mine in half to make them a little more manageable and you can start with about a half a cup of grapes. If grapes aren't in season, you can go with raisins or a dried cranberry makes a nice addition as well. 
As we mix those together, our dressing will be a very simple one, starting with two tablespoons of a light or low-fat mayonnaise and one tablespoon of orange juice. That combination gives it a little bit of tartness and just finishes off the salad. So let's get started. We'll start with our apples. Dice them how you'd like. You can make smaller dices or larger. Then we'll add our celery. We've got about a half a cup of celery today. And again, today we're using the red grapes to add just a little bit more spark of color to our salad. And we'll mix that up, just toss lightly in your bowl. And the two medium apples with this amount of grapes and celery will make a serving size for about four people. If you have more in your family, it's very easy to add another apple, add some more grapes. And nuts are also a nice accompaniment to an apple salad. If your family likes nuts and that additional crunch, you can throw those in as well. Our dressing, again, is just a little light mayonnaise with about a tablespoon of orange juice, and that makes it nice and spreadable and flow. And as we toss that into our apple salad, it will just lightly coat the apples and give it that little added flavor. There, wasn't that easy? A quick apple salad, enough to add an extra serving of fruit.